Today we discuss pediatric ureteroscopy with an eye toward technique and equipment. I like to break this down into a couple categories. The first are the adolescents, and if they're otherwise healthy index patients, the course is very similar to that of adult endoscopy. The second are the transition care patients in whom the challenges are chiefly in access and the high prevalence of struvite. And lastly, there are infants and children. Here the challenge is in access to the ureter, small optics, typically a tiny working channel, and the loads of specialized equipment that are needed for these cases. We'll start with the presentation of a case. This is a six-year-old boy who presented with umbilical pain and microhematuria. The only notable finding on physical exam is his elevated BMI. He underwent an abdominal ultrasound, which showed a stone in the right upper quadrant. On some views, it's measured as nine millimeters long, although the shadow is much less impressive. It's my habit to get an ultrasound right before surgery, and sure enough, the day beforehand, no stone is seen. So there are a few options. He could go to the operating room for a retrograde, he could be observed, or he can undergo a CT scan. In this case, the family opted for a CT scan, which shows the stone right over the iliac vessels, and for that reason, it's not visible on the ultrasound. There is an enormous amount of equipment that's required for this case. Ours is located on a single wheeled cart, which allows it to be moved room to room and makes it quite convenient. But for now, I'll focus on the humble C-arm. Ours is a flat panel detector here, which has some nice attributes. You can see the flat panel located at the top where the image intensifier used to be. And you can see the tablet-like screen at the right. These two features together allow for a, quite a low dose to be applied during the case. And we're lucky in that this particular unit performs better even than some of its peers. We use an adhesive Ioban drape, which makes a nice seal, keeps the warm air underneath, and keeps the patients warm and dry. In addition, we use a fluid warmer. We had avoided this in the past, but then some of our patients had arrived to the recovery unit cold. And you can notice that the image detector is just right next to the patient, fist breath away. Here's our endoscope. It's 9.5 French. It has a 5 French nominal working channel. It's useful for most cases in this age group. Here's the beginning of endoscopy. You can see the pendulous urethra here. You can just see the vera montanum. And here we switch the grip. You can see the left hand moves from holding the urethra to holding the scope itself. Holding the scope like this provides a nice stable platform and allows you to survey the bladder. I always check the location of both ureteral orifices to make sure that they are singular and orthotopic. It's surprising how often this is not the case. And here we engage the ureteral orifice just using the catheter itself. Perform a retrograde pilogram and pass the wire under live fluoro past the stone. It's probably the most important part of the case. We then withdraw the catheter, leaving only the wire. You can see the contrast draining and we return with the semi-rigid ureteroscope. This is a 4.5 French scope at the tip, 6.5 French further up, and we're passing it alongside next to the wire, freehand. The posterior urethra is very short compared to adults, and this boy is no exception. You can see the ureteral orifice at the end. We position the endoscope about a centimeter from the ureteral orifice and advance a glide wire up next to the uh, initial sensor wire. Both wires are 0 0.035. If you look really closely, you can see that some of the coating on the sensor wire tends to get dislodged. That's not as important for the wire outside as, as it is for the wire in the channel. I really like to avoid having any injury to the ureteroscopic working channel. But here we are, we've passed through the muscular hiatus, and we're passing up the ureter itself. You can see at this point that it's starting to get a little snug, and that's actually not due to anything on the screen, but due to the tapered nature of the scope, going from 4.5 French to 6.5 French back at the ureteral orifice. But nonetheless, it passes easily. We're seeing some dilated ureter, which is often a clue. And sure enough, around the bend is the stone. We bring it fully into view, and we withdraw our working wire, leaving the safety wire in position. And it's time to prepare for laser lithotripsy. Whenever I see that color of stone, I think of calcium oxalate dihydrate. It's like the Bart Simpson of stones. It's deep yellow, it's not too fragile, it's not too durile, it has these nice spiky edges which can be dusted off and allow for reduction of the stone size. 
And in this case, it would eventually be revealed that that's exactly what it is, mostly calcium oxalate dihydrate. We use a 200 micron fiber here. It happens to be a ball tip because that's the fiber we stock, and we carefully work around the edges dusting. I go fairly slowly. The goal isn't to speed through it, it's just to prevent a ureteral injury. And so you can see we're working largely from the outside in, but when we can, we try to shoot toward the lumen. The goal is to not retropulse any fragments up toward the kidney itself. This is my favorite angle to work. We're working over the top here. There's lots of space in the ureter. You don't have to worry about hitting the edge. You can see it creates a lot of dust, and the working channel is relatively small. And so that's just one of the problems of pediatric ureteroscopy. Limits on optics and limits on flow. Eventually, we'll have worked the stone down to a small enough size at which it can be basketed. So here it is being engaged. Looks a little peripheral, so we'll re-grab it a little bit more toward the center. And then again, because entry into the ureter is pretty difficult in children, you're better off just getting one good grasp, one good look at the ureter, and then bringing this out. So here we are carefully inspecting the ureter as we come out. And then in this case, it's actually easiest to bring the stone out completely, not to deposit it in the bladder, but just to deliver it, as the scope itself is quite small. It's important to know your equipment, the inner and outer diameter specifically, and at no time is this more important than when it comes time for stent placement. I like to stent through the same scope you saw earlier, the 9.5 French scope. It's got a 5 French working channel, and so it should accept a 4.8 French stent over an 035 wire. If it doesn't pass, if there's a slight misalignment, take off the bridge and you should be okay. Now the pusher that comes in the kit with a stent is six French, so you'll need to modify it, as I'll show you in a moment. Always good to have a backup plan, and if you have difficulty in passing the stent, but there's a little extra room in the urethra, then an 11 French scope with a 7.5 channel works perfectly. It's fiber optic, and that's how it gets such a large channel, so the view isn't quite as nice. You can go purely fluoroscopic with no endoscope, but there are some obvious disadvantages. You have less control, and the distance from the bladder neck to the ureteral orifice in children is quite short, so if you don't have a string, it's easy to deploy up the ureter by accident. Here's the stent placement itself. And here's the fluoroscopic view of the stent placement. We create our own pusher just by cutting off the end of the five French open-ended ureteral catheter. You can just see the end of it being pushed toward the bladder neck. The wire is removed as the stent is deployed. And then in this case, and especially with smaller stents, I like to make sure they're draining. So I check the side hole here and make sure I see some birefringent contrast here with some blood tinge draining. With a flat panel detector, the dose is really low, 0.2 milligray. I have some great colleagues in the Stone Center. I thank you for listening to this talk.